I love actors' earliest jobs and when they start in the business. Now, I know you did a deodorant commercial at one time, a long time ago, I believe. Uh -huh. Now, what, what, what exactly was it for? What did you do and how did you feel about it? Um, it was band roll on and it was a scene where I was at some amusement park with a girlfriend and we're in a, one of those photo booths that you cram in and you take a bunch of pictures and then all these guys follow us and cram in the booth with us and it's sort of like, aren't you glad you used band roll on? What a relief. And it was sort of a silly little, you know, spot like that. That was, that was my, my first job. <laughs> <laughs> Penelope, your father was in a classic TV series that I really enjoyed, uh, Please, Please Don't Eat the Daisies. Right. What did he teach you about the, uh, the entertainment business? Or what tips did he give you when you decided to become an actress? Mm, I think the main thing was that he really always said to keep you, um, he, it was a very important to be an individual and to, to be yourself. And, and he always stressed that, you know, and to be a kind person and be humble and, and considerate. And that was always like an important aspect, uh, he said, to really continuing to sustain. Um, yeah. Okay, and what about the business end of, uh, and like the darker side of Hollywood, and just like looking out well, for yourself? Well, yeah, he gets a little worried about me being seduced by Hollywood, and, 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 uh, um, and I think he, you know, that's why he always says, you know, remember your values and morals and don't get seduced. And, you know, I mean, he doesn't talk like that. I don't know who I'm talking <laughs> like. <laughs> and, uh, but he, uh, um, you know, I think it's important that he knows what the business is about and that people can lie to you and not be kind of uh, straight with you and try and manipulate you and uh, persuade you. So, it, you know, it's always to be strong, be yourself, stand up for yourself, you know. Have your integrity, um, and uh, and be passionate and professional. The, the shadow is, is very much a, a back lot picture, and I've been on the Universal lot, and I've walked around, I've looked in the crooks and nannies, and it's such a, a fascinating place for me. Yeah. Do you still get that sense when you go on a back lot, like this is that you're a part of history? Well, it it does put me put me back into a feeling of. Of, of history, I guess, where you know you can only imagine the days when Hollywood was what was at its peak of glamour and excitement, and imagining how you know the studios just they were bustling with with uh, so much activity and and probably running into all these stars at the commissary. It's sort of changed now because Hollywood isn't the same as it used to be, and people film on location so much now. But that was fun about doing the shadows, we filmed really all on the back lot, so it reminded me of old Hollywood, and, and that was kind of exciting. You look absolutely great. I mean, you always look great. You look even greater in this film. Oh, thanks. Uh, what were the, the, the costume fittings like when they decided, well, what should we... Well, this is my favorite period of fashion. This is my favorite era of fashion in the late 30s. I love the way the women dressed then and uh, the style and the way the clothes draped on women's bodies and the fabrics that they used and the cuts that they used. And um, so for me, it was like a dream come true to be able to wear these dresses and, and have them designed for me. So Bob Ringwood was so terrific because he really um, studied my body, learning how to, to um, accent, you know, the assets or the positive, <laughs> so to speak, and uh, he knew how to make the clothes fit just right so that they hugged the right places and they didn't hug the, hug the wrong places and that kind of thing. And So it was really fun to, to, to work with him and collaborate creatively on, on how I looked in this movie. I used to uh, do TV commercials and we were involved in a lot of very intricate lit projects. And in this film, I'm looking around and I don't know how long the setups were, but it was just so intricate the way it was lit. And I, I was thinking how precise the marks that you must have had to have hit in the movie. Well, Steve Broom, the cinematographer, worked with me on Carlito's Way, and so he had, he knew my face pretty well, and he knew how to light me already, which was great because then, I mean, for instance, Marlena Dietrich would always, you know, have her own uh, cinematographer. She'd always ask for the same one because he always knew how to light her, yeah. and that's why she had always that glowing look about her whenever she was in a movie. She always popped out. So I know Steve Burham wanted to have the same effect with me on, in the movie of that sense of like the woman sort of 
illuminating the screen. So it was, yeah, it was very technical in the sense that if I, you know, had to move a certain way or lean a certain way, if I, you know, if I, you know, missed my mark, it, you know, I'd lose the light that he was was specifically for me. So it was interesting and, you know, and exciting. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of uh, in-flight movies when I travel, and I've always been wondering about actors when they're on the plane and they see their own film uh, on an in-flight movie. Now, didn't you see the freshman once on uh, on a flight and... Nobody recognized me, yeah. So, uh, well, I had very dark hair in that movie since I played an Italian mafia uh, princess and uh, Marlon Brando's daughter. So I, I have lighter hair and uh, so people didn't, didn't recognize me and it was kind of... You know, on the one hand, probably okay because nobody bothered me, but then on the other hand, it was, it was a little disconcerting. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's me, you know. <laughs> so, but that's fine. Now, uh, with Carlito's Way, it's kind of a, a change of image for you. It kind of, I think, maybe an image that changed that started with uh, the gun in Bailey's handbag, uh, and that you're playing like the, the very sexy type of person. Showing well, the gun, gun in Betty Lou's handbag is more of a comedy, and and. I think there were more shades of of, of of what people have seen me do before. Although in Carlito's Way, it's a much more dramatic role and more intense and serious uh, uh, woman th that I play. I mean, it was the story itself is 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 much heavier and, and grittier and more dramatic. So, yeah, we uh, I know a lot of people in the audience were a little bit surprised that uh, that you do some nudity in this and that you uh, you swear a bit. Now, is that going to shock yeah. some people? Well, my father, for one. <laughs> I don't know that he'll see this movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think uh, people aren't used to seeing me that way. Um, I really felt that it was such a minor part of the movie. I really didn't think it's something that was gratuitous or exploited in any way. Um, I thought it was tastefully shot, and, and uh, it's just so minor to the story. I think the love story is really the the most important thing about my character and, and uh, the relationship with Al Pacino's character in Carlito's Way. I, I really feel that, that, that Gail has a heart and a soul and integrity and uh, I think it's a well-rounded character. I think there is a lot of range of emotion for me to show in this film and um, I really felt that, um, that, yeah, it was something that was different than people are used to seeing me do, but I mean there's sides to everybody that people don't know and I think it gave me an opportunity to, to do something that was a little bit different from what people are used to seeing and um, it was a chance for me to show an acting range. So. Okay. Uh, one quick question, last one. With uh, Al Pacino, I know you worked with some incredibly big name actors. Now, what uh, what made you most nervous going into this, that you are going to work with him before you met him? I wasn't nervous about working with Al Pacino at all. Um, it, it was very, uh, it felt very natural and very comfortable and, and he's a real consummate actor, very professional and worked so hard and he gave me so much support and and, uh, um, and he's such a brilliant actor, I mean it, it just it, you were, I mean, it, it helps me as an actress to work with great people because then I have something to work off of and they're giving me so much. So I wasn't really apprehensive at all about working with him. Uh, so I was a little nervous about, about Brian De Palma, but uh, he and I get along great and, and, and I adore him and that turned out, I was a little more nervous about working with Brian than Al. <laughs> but he's great, Brian.